The Monkees were a Hollywood rock band created by studio executives after the huge popularity of the Beatles in the mid-60s. They ruled the primetime airwaves entertaining young girls with their wild and crazy comedy and squeaky clean bubblegum pop rock, which in turn created a cross-promotional dream come true to record executives. After two years of being on the television, studio executives felt it was time for the so-called Prefab Four to make their way to the movies. And what better way to introduce the monkeys to the big screen than to hire Jack Nicholson and Bob Rafelson to write the screenplay. You think they call us plastic now, babe, but you wait till I get through telling them how we do it, huh? Oh boy. So we opened the movie with the dedication of a brand new bridge. When all of a sudden... <laughs> all those little rascals. Image with no philosophies. Okay, that's more like it. We hope you like our story, although there isn't one. That is to say, there's many. That way, there is more fun. You've told us you like action and games of many kinds. You like to dance, we like to sing, so let's all lose our minds. We know it doesn't matter, because what you came to see is what we'd love to give you and give it one, two, three. But it may come three, two, one, two, or jump from nine to five. And when you see the end in sight, the beginning may arrive. For those who look for meanings, inform as they do fact, we might tell you one thing, but we'd only take it back. Not back like in a box back, not back like in a race, not back so we can keep it, but back in time and space. You say we're manufactured, to that we all agree. So make your choice and we'll rejoice in never being free. Hey, hey, we are the monkeys, we've said it all before. The money's in, we're made of tin, we're here to give you more. The money's in, we're made of tin, we're here to give you... This isn't the same monkeys, right? I mean, this has got to be the Mankeys, which is a performance arts group that just happened to get a movie deal with Columbia. Huh. So, then we go into a World War II sketch, which then in turn becomes footage from a concert performance where they actually play their own instruments. And after that, well... Okay, so are they trying to comment on the press ripping them to shreds or the, their fans trying to get a piece of them? Then we're taken to the middle of the desert where Mickey is, I guess, trying to get his conscience to feel good about his decisions. Pathetic. Again. It's pitiful. Shut up. You shut up. No, you shut up. You shut up. Shut up. You. You, 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 shut up, you, shut up, you. Okay, I will. So then we have another musical number, only this time with belly dancers. Jeez, I really wonder why this film wasn't successful. Then we're taken to the Old West, only to find out that this was all make-believe. Well, Mickey, wait a minute. So then he rounds up the entire gang and finds Peter at the commissary with somewhat of a huge problem. I asked you first. I ordered this and I don't want it. Just throw it away. I can't. They're a starving, starving Chinese. Chinese. This is serious. So they leave Peter alone. And Peter... 
All right, that's enough. Cut, cut it. Print it, please. Is it? All right, that should be it. BK. Yeah. I think we're on the other side. Hey, Bob, that's right. not right, man. Oh, well, well, yeah, you know, about hitting a girl. Over hey, there. Is that all right, man? Does that look good? I, I thought it looked great. So then we find the monkeys taking a tour of an industrial plant, only to be led into a trap. Come along. Hey. Sir? Hey, what? Something. What's going what? on? What? What's that? Yeah, I can't see what? anything. What's hey, happening? open up! What's that? Hey. All right, right fellas, will you come forward, please? Who's that? That's it. Come on up forward, huh, fellas? Who, who are you? Come on, just keep coming forward. That's it. That's it. All right, now, come on. Work your way closer to the... That's it. Uh, now you're doing better. Come on. A little faster, fellas. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in there. Where? Get in. Get inside. In Get inside. Get inside, will you please? That's the that idea. All right. Crazy. All right, now jump up and down a little. Jump come on, fellas. This? Get lost what in it. This? There you go. Very good. Look, you're supposed to be dandruff, fellas. Will you work at it, please? Jump up and down Dan. a little bit. All right, there play back, go. please. That's better. Little action. You know, I had the same experience with that edible tampon ad that I did. So then they're sucked into this giant vacuum cleaner. I wish I was making this up. Except for Davy, who escapes only to do a song and dance. Only to be criticized by Frank Zappa. The song was pretty white. Well, so am I. What can I tell you? You've been working on your dancing, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been rehearsing it. Glad you noticed that. Yeah, it doesn't leave much time for your music. You should spend more time on it because the youth of America depends on you to show the way. Yeah? Yeah. But did he listen to Frank? I think history will be the judge of that one. So then Mickey, Peter, and Mike escape the vacuum cleaner and find Davy, only to be accosted by a police officer. Hey, okay, weirdos. Just what were you doing in there? And this better be straight. So then we're taken to a sauna where Peter is listening to a swami. A swami in a sauna. I'm sure that looked funnier on paper. To allow the unknown to occur and to occur requires clarity. And where there is clarity, there is no choice. And where there is choice, there is misery. So with this new knowledge, Peter tries to warn the guys as we are taken back in time to the industrial factory. Hey guys, you'll end up back in the box! So Peter tells the guys what he knows. Psychologically speaking, the human mind, or brain, or whatever, is almost incapable of distinguishing between the real and the vividly imagined experience, sound and film of music and radio. Even these manipulated experiences are received more or less directly and uninterpreted by the mind. They are catalogued and recorded and either acted upon directly or stored in the memory or both. Now, this process, unless we pay it tremendous attention, begins to separate us from the reality of the now. Am I being clear? For where there is clarity, there is no choice. And where there is choice, there is misery. But then, why should I speak, since I know nothing? Nothing? You know nothing? That's right. So the monkeys try to escape this Hollywood hellhole, only to be chased by a giant Victor Mature who is also watching this whole thing on television. Okay, my mind just exploded. So we are taken right back to the beginning of the film where we learn that the only escape for the monkeys is suicide. Cry. 
only to be trapped in a giant aquarium to be locked away in the studio vaults. So that was Head. On the surface, Head is a plotless mess of a movie without a conventional story or characters that anyone would like. Mike is portrayed as a con man, Davey a vapid airhead star, Mickey is a blithering space case, and Peter becomes an Indian wise man's mouthpiece that doesn't know what he's doing. Yet, if you look closer, the film is really a work of art and I feel is the best example of rock and roll cinema from the 60s. It captures the side of the 60s that was only being lampooned and caricatured in Hollywood films at the time. Instead of being a vapid Hollywood bubblegum comedy, Head challenges the audience to try to look deeper at Hollywood and themselves, to think of what they are being fed through their TVs could just be garbage and mind-numbing swill. It could be viewed as the monkeys trying to escape being an accomplice to the crime of dumbing down the American audience, or it could be viewed as the complete deconstruction of Hollywood itself. It is a one-of-a-kind film and really laid the groundwork for other great films like Easy Rider, Carnal Knowledge, Five Easy Pieces, and Raging Bull. Of course, that claim is arguable because Head failed miserably at the box office. It does have a really good moral, though. Nobody ever lends money to a man with a sense of humor. You tell him, brother. I'm Zach Scott, and I'll see you on the next Laserdisc Memories. Do I have to do this all over again?